reminder for our for everyone in the press conference as student athletes come to the table again uh, NCAA policy requires a mask in front of student athletes we do have some masks over at the table if you don't have one but again in front of our student athletes please mask up uh, no flash photography no video recording please silence phones and those individuals accessing the press conference via zoom uh, you can use the hand feature and we'll try and get you your question uh, for our student athletes and coach Uh, joining us, uh, Notre Dame, uh, a winner in a thrilling game, double overtime. The the Fighting Irish will play on Friday at 4:15 against number six seed Alabama <laughs> in in San Diego. As uh, head coach Mike Bray joins us, along with uh, Cormac Ryan with 16 points and uh, Paul Atkinson Jr. 26 points was 13 of 15 from the field. Uh, we start our press conference uh, with uh, Coach Bray. Uh, just a, a statement on your basketball team this evening. Well, let me start by saying happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone here. And you notice Paul's shot went in at 12.02 on St. Patrick's Day. So maybe there was a little bit of karma there. If there's a better game in the NSA tournament, I got to see it. That was an unbelievable <coughs> college basketball game. And they're really good and tough and fearless. And I'm really proud of our group because we just kept hanging in. We've grown a lot in the mental toughness area. Uh, we are gonna start with questions uh, for our student athletes and then uh, we'll get to coach, but uh, let's start in the first row here in the middle. Paul, take us through that last play if you would. <clears throat> yeah, you know, Blake, I uh, saw him driving to the rim. You know, I know he's going to go hard and try to either get a foul or, you know, make a bucket. I just wanted to follow up if it was a miss and no call. So that's all I did. You know, I just wanted to chase after the ball, got it up, and got a good bucket. Paul, how, how important was it for you to, to play well tonight? You said coming in you wanted to bounce back 20, 26 points and 56 points in the paint. Was that a pretty good bounce back for you? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a pretty good bounce back, you know. I just wanted to battle for these guys. You know, they haven't been here. I haven't been here in a long time and potentially my last year. So I just wanted to battle. You know, a lot of people don't get this chance. For, for those asking questions, if you could, just your name and affiliation. A second row. Um, Austin Huff, Goshen News. Um, both for Cormac and Paul, I guess we'll start with Cormac. How do you try to summarize what you just, uh, what type of game you just played in right there? We got an unbelievably gritty group. We don't quit. And I think you saw that. I mean, so proud of how we played and, and battled. And our fight, man, is you can't really teach that. It's contagious. And uh, we, we got it. Yeah, you know, shout out to them. They're a really good team, like Coach Bray said. You know, we, they wanted to battle, too, and we just wanted to battle a little harder. We got, we got some buckets to go in, and we matched up, and we played. First row. Uh, John Bryce, Irish Sports Daily, for both you guys. Um, just You've played in so many games like somewhat like this throughout the year in terms of it being close, coming down to the wire. How much did those past experiences help? And then you heard Coach Bray talk about the growth and mental toughness. What do you both attribute that to? Paul, can you start? Yeah, I think Coach Bray said it more times than I can count. You know, it's a battle-tested group. We've been through a lot of tough battles. We had a couple of overtime games in the regular season. and. You know, we stuck it out a couple games. Sometimes it didn't go our way, but, you know, we know how to win games. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like Coach Bray has said this a couple times, it's like we're addicted to game situations. And, and man, it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun to be a part of. This is, this is, what, this is what it's all about, man. March Madness, like, like Coach said. I mean, one of the better games I've – maybe the best game I've ever been a part of. And to do it, you know, in, in this atmosphere, on this stage, you know, it's just – it's a blessing. Well, you, we'll go to Zoom. Uh, Daniel, your, your question for, for the student athletes. Daniel Rodriguez with Diff League with Daniel. Uh, my question is for Cormac. Um, in overtime, when the ball was tipped and you caught it, what was going through your head? Because um, I believe that that play really changed the game for you guys and it really got you guys going for overtime and now the win. I mean, sometimes in, in basketball, things go your way. And 
look, I, I woke up this morning. I slept great. Breakfast tasted good. I got the wordle in two guesses. So sometimes you just, you got, you got a little bit of luck of the Irish. So that ball was thrown a little too high. I grabbed it, and there was one, there was one destination in mind. So I'm, I was fortunate enough to, to make that play, and, and that was just the first of many, many plays down the stretch that this group made. So, I mean, what, what a just what an unbelievable game. Christopher on Zoom, uh, your question for our student athletes. Hey, this is Chris Heidel from Hermitton Radio in Baltimore. Congratulations on the big uh, overtime win. Uh, just talk about Rhino Harper. What type of player is he on the court? It seemed like he was all over the place trying to find three pointers, throwing things from different parts of the uh, Ohio Valley. So just talk about, you know, Rhino Harper. Paul? Yeah, no, he's he's a really good player. He's really talented. Made a lot of tough shots toward the end, as you saw. Um, you know, he's really skilled with the ball, and you know, c controls the offense for them really well. You know, I think he's he's a really really good player wherever he ends up. Questions in the audience here for our student athletes. Let's uh, come here to the first row, on the outside. Yeah, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN Cormac. How do you guys? Yeah, obviously a lot of adrenaline and excitement right now. But how do you guys uh, uh, just deal with the quick turnaround here before your next game? Yeah, I mean, I think soaking it in, being excited is great, but this is a mature group, and we know what's ahead of us, and we prepared for it. We were ready for it. We came into this game packed for San Diego. So we're, uh, we're on to the next one, and, and we're fired up, and we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be ready. A couple more questions here for our student athletes. We'll go to Zoom. Uh, Tom, your question. Tom Marion with AP Radio. Paul, what's it like to score the winning basket in an NCAA tournament game? I uh, haven't felt like that in a long time. It's it's amazing. You know, it's you know you know a bunch of cameras on you, a big spotlight. Last game of the night, you know it's it's amazing. That's when I got my teammates to cheer with. It's just it's just awesome. Got family up in the stands. Couldn't ask for anything better. We'll go one more question here for our student athletes uh, before we get to coach D David. Your question for the student athletes. Can you talk about the range of emotions you guys have going on right now, and, and your initial thoughts about facing Alabama. Can't wait. What he said. <laughs> All right, uh, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations. Best of luck on uh, on Friday. All right, now we'll, we'll open up the floor uh, to head coach Mike Bray. Uh, question, first row in the middle. Mike, Tom Noy, Southland Tribune. 22 years, can, can, this has to rank near the top of, of five overtime games, four overtime games, yeah. NCAA tournament games, just the swings that, that yeah. you, you went through. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, the, those, were in, uh, those were in the regular season, and, and this one's in the real thing. And to play like that, and uh, to to advance, I'm, I'm I'm thrilled and I'm really proud of our group and they deserve it, man. They've been just an amazing group to coach. They've chased it together since last year, uh, and um, you know we'll we'll get our legs under us by Friday afternoon, but we'll need some time to do that. Let's go to the third row on the inside. Tim Priester, Irish Illustrated, Mike, right here. This one, yes. Uh, could you just? give a synopsis of the, the matchup games that you were playing uh, throughout, especially in the second half. You know what's amazing in a game like that, and I've said this before, I can't remember some of them. There were so many big plays. Um, you know, we wanted to press and get a trap, and if we couldn't get a steal, you know, we had to foul right away, and, and we got the steal on the inbounds play, which was just an amazing play by, by Cormack. Um, of course, we couldn't get our hands on a couple loose balls, but we had four guys diving on the floor. And it wasn't like effort. And, and all of a sudden, the one they got and dunked it, I'm like, come on. And then when Harper threw the one off the board, and he's a great player, I'm like, come on now. And, um, um, but I love what we did at the end. You know, we weren't going to call timeout. Our guy that can get to the lane the best, we came up and had two ball screens for him, and he distorts things. He turned the corner and somebody had to help, and Paul cleaned it up great. Um, but I thought our defense in the second half was there. I was on them hard. I, you know, they had 41 at half, and they were scorching us. So our D was better. Let's go uh, first row, middle. P. 
Pete Byrne, WSBT. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, Mike. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned this may end up being the game of the tournament. Who knows? We'll, yeah. we'll find out over the next few days. But what does it feel like to come away victorious after a game like that? I mean, um, you know, I'm thrilled. You know, you want to walk down. I've been on both sides of this. And you talk to the Rutgers coach and congratulate them because, you know, it comes to an end quick. And I wanted to talk to some of their players because I thought I think they got a heck of a team. And they are fearless. Um, and, man, do they have some guards. Um, but, um, you know, you, you just kind of drink it in, maybe because I'm a more experienced coach. It's neat to see your kids celebrate because they've worked really hard. They dreamed advancing. They dreamed getting in the tournament. They dreamed advancing in the tournament. And to see that locker room is really cool. Second row in the middle. Austin Huff, uh, Gosha News, Mike. Um, you know, obviously Paul had a fantastic game tonight, but it seemed like that was the focal point on your offense in the first half. He had a huge first half and then obviously stepped up in second overtime. Was that, I guess, you know, the strategy in the first half there, go to him? We early. felt we could throw it into him and, and he could score in the low post, and, um, and, and he did. And then, you know, for a while there, we liked the matchup as Nate as the only big guy because when he ball screens, they had, a, you know, they had to make a decision. And... That, you know, as far as helping off of him. And we had some amazing drives after some movement. I mean, we really drove it well. Um, and then we came back to two big guys to finish the game. And, you know, thank God for long timeouts because you're in there with your staff kind of debating and, and eventually I got to make the call, right? My butt's on the line. Just a couple questions here left for Coach. Uh, we'll go in the front row. Coach, you – Levon Whitaker with ABC 57. Coach, you talked about – many a times how a win here can springboard you in the rest of the tournament. Is this the type of win that can pretty much rocket launch you, you know, yeah. the rest of this March Madness tournament? Did UCLA win in overtime last year against Michigan State in this game? All right, you know, so, I mean, I Sunday night at my house, I said we're going to try and channel UCLA. And then, you know, talk about coachable guys, huh? You know, and, and uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, and I'm damn sure going to convince them over the next 48 hours or 36 that, it's our time. Mike, John Bryce, Irish Sports Daily. And Nate's play, especially off the bench, and, and the aggression that he showed at times in the second half. How important was that? How much do you think maybe some of the other guys fed off of that? Yeah. I'm really proud of him, man. He's, uh, he, he has really grown. And on this stage, um, this was a new stage for these seniors. Um, Nate, Dane, Prentice especially. And I thought they delivered. You know, I, I was thinking to myself, can they deliver? They delivered in the regular season. Can they deliver? I'm, I'm really proud that they delivered and were ready to roll. Yeah, and I guess big picture, that would be my next question. How important, you talked about not only getting back here, but advancing here. Yeah. So, so how big is this statement? What does it mean? Well, to win a game in the turn, you know, I don't care. Anytime you win a game in this thing, it's huge. And, you know, again, we're going to, we're going to talk, we talked about, I, my quote was, let's use Dayton as a springboard. And I will continue to say that uh, for the next five hours in the air to San Diego. <laughs> Coach, outstanding win. Thank you. Congratulations. Best of luck on Friday. Uh, a note to the media, we did have that power outage, and power was out at the Hyatt. Yeah, it was good. It was good.